Hello and welcome to another video for Librem.net. Today I'm going to talk about this thing a bit, about the Librem 5 by Purism. Now, Purism recently announced that they have further delivery delays and that my original order of Librem 5 from October 23rd, 2017, uh, so yeah, uh, will take uh, even longer until it's be shipped. So uh, it definitely won't be there before October, if I read their announcement correctly. So that would be then four years, more than four years after ordering, and they were originally supposed to ship, I think, in early 2019. But yeah, anyway, I mean, I uh, still like this effort. So I'm fine with it. Also, I managed to get one of another backer who wasn't happy. And today I just want to talk a bit about the work in progress that the software is. This is uh, Pure OS by Xantium. Now, by Xantium uh, is to Pure OS what Bullseye is to Debian. So the upcoming Debian 11 has another Pure OS sibling because PureOS is basically downstream of Debian, uh, but uh, FSF certified. And so this is uh, my, my current install here. Now, most of the apps that I've installed aren't there by default. Um, in fact, I think I can name those that are there by default, and that's, I think, 2048, the calculator, chess, clocks, uh, the document viewer of files, which, by the way, is pretty cool because uh, Purism adapted Nautilus uh, 3.38. And I hope that these changes will eventually get upstreamed. They chose version 3.38 because GNOME 3.38 is what is going to chip in Bullseye and Byzantium when those are going to chip. So, yeah, it's taking time. Debian releases take a long time and uh, you know that's just how it is but this is an adaptive version of Nautilus and it's quite nice uh, so I hope that uh, other distributions maybe package this up and ship it too because it's yeah quite good um, not that a portfolio wasn't a great form file manager or Nautilus was also somewhat usable but yeah then uh, what else is being so I think the image viewer maybe may have been pre-installed because this is an old install that I've just updated. Um, and then to get into the work in progress part more, your parental controls comes pre-installed, but that's just a dependency. So that's the launcher that should be hidden. I think it's part of the GNOME software stack. And GNOME software is the PureOS store here on the Librem 5 on PureOS. And yeah. So that thing doesn't scale perfectly, uh, sadly. So uh, I will wanted to show you that it doesn't scale perfectly by default yet, for whatever reason, and run uh, my fun script here. Wait, I think I should first run a kill all pure OS dash store. Okay, now should have some. Okay, see that's the app ID. And if we now just open another terminal window and run scale to fit. Oh, that's scale dash to dash fit and sm dot puree store. Think it was, yeah, and on, but I think the on is opt actually optional. It's now running with scale to fit, and it's still downloading the software catalog here. But yeah, uh, so let me go through the rest of the setup. So usage comes pre-installed, sure of that, and whether 
Um, this is actually because Byzantium is, you know, only going to ship once Debian is done, which may take a while. Uh, I think this is not really a definite version, and currently my network seems to be uh, a bit slow, but yeah, that happens. And now this is perfectly scaled. Um, I think it doesn't scale perfectly because these preview images here are too big. But the interesting thing is that this is based on GNOME Software 3.38, uh, while the previous uh, GNOME software variants on uh, operating systems like Arch Linux Arm, I think Mobian, and also Postmark OS, I didn't check all of them, are still on the 3.36 branch. Now, why did they really fork that? And uh, why is there so little software? And why am I talking about this so much? Now, as you know, I maintain this apps list. So let's briefly switch scenes here. And yeah, uh, of course, I don't think there will be any games loading because PureOS doesn't have uh, that add-on re repository that Amber has so pure as Byzantium doesn't have that yet. So because it's not yet shipped, because it will only be shipped after again Debian uh, will have done the release, and then shortly after Purism will follow. I'm certain. So the key here is that they only show apps that have this uh, s segment in there. I think so. This is Tootle, which shows uh, i think uh, it should be in the well where would, where would it be utilities i don't know let's see if that loads um so if your app app data dot xml file for your app has these values in there it will show up in the purest or otherwise it won't and yeah so dialect has that too um and other apps have that too. So let's just look for dialect briefly to confirm what I was talking about. So this should be the meta info file. And let's look for it here. See, that's why it's shown here. Now, many apps haven't added that yet. You can still install them uh, on PureOS, of course, but you have to do so manually, which is, of course, uh, not as great. But, I mean, it's isn't it cool that they've got this selection? And I think that if, if you are an app developer and you're listening to this, um, please uh, make sure that your app data XML has these values here, uh, custom non value key purism, colon, colon, form factor, and so on. It's not an official standard, for sure, but it's the best thing we have. So uh, either I think we should come up with something uh, that's not purism proprietary, so proper for the sub convention, but I don't know how long these things, things take. I think there was a reason for purism to go this way, and I think apps should adop adopt it now. Let me demo a few apps um, let's so take a look most at of these apps because again this is uh, the one that i version of megapixel that i compiled from source from purism's repos and yeah it starts it doesn't work too well but i mean it kind of works and it's been you know it's uh, a bit tricky so it worked better uh, a few days ago and then i updated and I don't know what happened. Maybe I, I messed up the settings or something. But if you look carefully, you can see that the camera is working. Um, it isn't working for me as well as uh, I've seen on photos that, for example, uh, Sebastian Kruskowiak uh, DOS took, who is a purism developer. But then uh, I um, haven't been really tweaking this a lot. And I don't know whether I'm running the correct version. And I didn't clarify this before. So speaking of apps I compiled from source, here's another one uh, because this 
I will title this video Work in Progress. And this is an app developed by Purism's CEO, Todd Weber. And this is basically a YouTube client. So we can search. Oh, well, yeah, that's... Uh, see, that's the video that comes up apparently. Uh, if you search for my channel and then I think if I've got auto rotation enabled, yeah. See, now you can watch my boring videos like this. That's pretty cool, right? And uh, you can switch here and it's working just fine. You can close the full screen view again. And yeah, this is an app that you should try. It's written in Python, so it doesn't take long to compile even on device. But that tension aside, uh, let me get back to the flat backup. So one that we could demo here is Shortwave, which is a GTK4 app now. Uh, it's been ported over and yeah, there seem to be some issues with that seam. That doesn't look totally right to me, but I mean, it works. And also Shortwave again, they've got these uh, metadata files sorted out, so it's showing. Also, what has been enabled since my unboxing video is GPS. I will use Pure Maps to demo this. It's always asking whether it's allowed to find my position. And here, this is an aerial overview. So no street names, uh, it's hard to track me, but this is pretty much my position. So GPS fix seems to be there. And um, that's also pretty cool. Now I had to, and here are a couple photos that I took with the number five earlier in pics. So yeah, that's indoor works great. Outdoor is way too bright, so. But then megapixels always takes a raw photo too, so you can likely adjust that manually in post-processing if that's your jam. I just, yeah, I was busy and didn't bother. So yeah, this is Software Progress by Purism Librem 5 on the experimental Byzantium branch. Well, it's not really experimental, right? It's going to be stable in Debian. So that's the opposite of experimental, but it's, well, it isn't uh, really blessed yet for users. Uh, so take all this with the grain of salt. But I think what you can see is that the Librem 5 has gotten better. Uh, Wi-Fi worked without me enabling it uh, by toggling the kill switch here. That's also an indicator when the microphone is off. Now there's this indicator for positioning. Uh, and yeah, when the microphone is off, by the way, the cameras also don't work. Right? There's nothing, nothing there now. Before it was weird gray and now nothing. And if I enable it, does this Come back, see, yeah, difference. So the kill switches actually work. But this is all very smooth and I still like this phone a lot, even though they've got this delay. But thank you for watching and check out my blog, linmob.net, and the app list at linmob apps. And yeah, also please read this one and maybe contribute. That would be great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great week.